Thank you for inviting me here today to speak to this distinguished group. As you begin this meeting, the 34th Interpol Specialist Group on Crimes Against Children, I wanted to mention that we are gathered here today united to address what has become one of the most complex, evolving, and alarming challenges that society has ever faced. The use of the internet and technology to abuse children on a mass scale. As you, the experts, are well aware, it is a sad reality that today, for criminals with a sexual interest in children, it has never been easier to access and circulate child sexual abuse material. It's never been easier to engage and coerce children online. And it has never been easier for sexual predators to identify vulnerable people, to reach into their lives, often in the privacy of their own homes, and abuse them in record numbers. In fact, children are being groomed online by people they've never met and coerced into producing sexually explicit images of themselves in humiliating acts of abuse. And today, offenders can connect with other offenders online anywhere in the world and share their disgusting tactics and strategies. They pay to watch the live streaming of children being sexually abused all over the world using anonymous access and cryptocurrency mechanisms to obfuscate their identity and crimes. But according to a 2016 UNICEF survey, young people are aware and they're developing a clearer sense of the threat they face online. In fact, 80% of 18-year-olds surveyed believe that they and their peers are in danger of being sexually exploited online. And among those young people are countless victims real children and teenagers with names and stories whose lives have been shattered. One example is a little girl called Rosalind in the Philippines and her sister who were forced to participate in live streaming sexual abuse in the ultimate betrayal by those who they should be able to trust most, their very own parents. Elsa, who is 12, and her sister Gina, who is 13, from Madagascar, were sexually exploited by a 59-year-old European man who employed their mother as a domestic worker. And Charlotte from England, who suffers from Asperger's syndrome, took to the internet, desperately seeking friendship and acceptance, but instead, a man posing as a young girl exploited her friendship. He groomed her and began demanding naked photos, which he then posted onto a social networking site, exploiting her vulnerability again and again with each view. These brave young people have spoken out against their offenders, and with the help and support of expert professionals, they have demonstrated great courage and resilience. But we know there are countless victims of this crime who are suffering in silence, with no one to turn to and no way to alleviate their pain. And it's not just teenagers who fall prey. The Internet Watch Foundation reported in 2016 that of the 68,000 reports they received of images of online sexual exploitation, 1,788 of those were victims assessed to be two years old or younger. I don't need to tell you that this heinous crime must be stopped. But in a rapidly developing world, we cannot address this simply by managing the cases that happened in our own communities. The global nature of the internet and the technology we all use must make sure that this crime cannot be addressed by one country alone. As Rosalind, Elsa, Gina, and Charlotte's stories demonstrate, this is an international crime. It does not observe country borders or boundaries, and it cannot be addressed without collaboration and cooperation. The solution to the problem is a coordinated worldwide response from government, civil society organizations, law enforcement, and technology companies. To fight this abhorrent crime, it takes us all, united in a global, global multi-stakeholder approach. The We Protect Global Alliance to End Child Sexual Exploitation Online is that response, and is being purpose-built to solve this challenge. The recently completed merger of We Protect with the Global Alliance Against Child Sexual Abuse Online has created, for the first time ever, a single global organization with the influence, expertise, and resources to transform how online child sexual exploitation is dealt with and how it's disrupted around the world. 
The We Protect Global Alliance mission is to empower everyone with a responsibility to protect children online, to identify and protect victims, to remove child sexual abuse material online, that which fuels this crime, and to strengthen cooperation to track down perpetrators and protect its vulnerable victims. The We Protect Global Alliance has unprecedented reach, with 70 countries serving as members of the We Protect Our Global Alliance, along with international child protection and civil society organizations. The biggest names in the global technology industry, including Facebook, Google, and Microsoft, and most importantly, our host today and one of our most important partners, Interpol. This unprecedented collaboration is, is, is uniting in the goal of ending child exploitation by supporting a comprehensive national action program and galvanizing global action. To achieve this, we need to secure high-level commitment from all of the key players involved and ensure that everyone involved is aware of the threat and how it's evolving and manifesting online. That is why we're working in partnership with UNICEF to deliver targeted programs and awareness campaigns, such as the hashtag Reply for All communications campaign, which started in June this year. The Reply for All campaign is heartbreaking, but it's also inspirational. The campaign features video stories and testimonials from victims and those who have stood up to end violence, some of whom I've already mentioned this morning. And it has so far been viewed 2.6 million times. The campaign has provided a platform for children to share advice on how to deal with abuse online. This has had the effect of creating an online community where children support each other in dealing with online violence, and the campaign has already reached children in over 40 countries, with 1.5 million views even in its first week alone. But demonstrating that change can happen is as important as raising awareness. That is why the UK government provided £10 million in, to UNICEF to deliver a global program of capacity building to tackle online child sexual exploitation in 17 countries and four regions in 2015 and 2016. And that change is already happening. The development of a national platform for child safety online in Albania led to 40 reports of online child sexual exploitation a crime that was previously rarely reported, and an education campaign reached 20,000 primary school children. In Guatemala, We Protect funded project dismantled two online child exploitation networks, which led to 28 prosecutions. In Uganda, 25% of law enforcement officials were trained in techniques for identifying and rescuing victims at risk. In Madagascar, 18 children were rescued from sexual exploitation. And finally, in Kenya, 2,244 child victims received support through child protection services. But to scale these programs and initiatives takes a high-level political commitment, too. And fortunately, the world is coming together, and many countries have already made their commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals. In particular, there are three that are relevant to our efforts here. The first is Sustainable Development Goal 16.2, to end the abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all forms of violence against children. The second, SDG 8.7, is to end child labor. And finally, SDG 5.2, to eliminate the sexual exploitation of women and girls. And in Abu Dhabi, in Abu Dhabi at the second We Protect Summit, participating countries committed to delivering and established a, coordinate, a coordinated national response to online child sexual exploitation in their own countries. And what's more, they agreed they would accomplish this by adopting the model national response. The model developed in partnership with the UK's National Crime Agency, CEOP Command, was developed to provide countries with a real starting point to assess their capabilities in responding to and tackling this heinous crime. The model national response is a best practice roadmap that details the capabilities required by a country to enable the delivery of comprehensive response to online sexual exploitation in areas of policy, governance, law enforcement, societal responses, and victim care with, and working with the industry and the media. This model is not prescriptive. 
It defines the capabilities required, but does not dictate how they should be provided. It helps the country identify gaps in their own capabilities, prioritize national efforts to fill those gaps by establishing a common set of capabilities. It enhances international cooperation. We have already seen UNICEF deploy the model national response as a framework to guide a review of capabilities for tackling online CSE in Southeast Asia with law enforcement agencies. We believe that this essential framework must be made available and supported globally, and that is why today I'm pleased to be launching a guidance document that defines further how to develop and implement each of the capabilities of the model national response. This is the document, and I hope you'll take it home with you. This guidance will, importantly, take countries through the process of answering the key questions to begin organizing to combat this crime and support those whose lives are hurt by it. And with a clear and understood framework, there is a potential for countries around the world to share best practice and to deliver solutions at scale, solutions that make the world a hostile place for those who seek to harm children. However, delivering on this goal requires funding. That is why the UK has worked with UNICEF to establish the Fund to End Violence Against Children, and we have committed 40 million pounds over the next four years to tackle this crime globally. And in July this year, I was proud to launch the fund in New York with the UN Secretary General and the Chief Executive of UNICEF. The We Protect Global Alliance Board is responsible for advising the fund on how to prioritize and program its activities for maximum results and impact. And the fund will use the model national response to prioritize and access the quality of proposals received to the fund. This partnership is unprecedented. A genuine multi-stakeholder initiative with the resources to transform how online child sexploit <coughs> sexual exploitation is dealt with worldwide. And I look forward to delivering more changes on the ground. And that change cannot come soon enough. We know that due to the nature of this crime, the demographic of its victims, and the advances of technology, that we cannot rest on our success. More and more needs to be done to ensure that all parts of the international community recognize this evolving threat and focus on mobilizing a response capable of ending this heinous crime. Through the model national response, we can help countries to build their capabilities to tackle online CSE. And through the international reach of the We Protect Global Alliance and its members, we can build a strong international platform of cooperation to empower your efforts and to scale them to have an impact on a national and international level. I want to thank you all for your incredible commitment and dedication to combating this crime and to protecting the vulnerable from harm and abuse. We are empowered and strengthened by your efforts, and together one day I hope we can say that we've done enough. But until then, we cannot stop until every child, no matter where they live in the world, or under what conditions, has the opportunity to dream, to learn, to create, and to live healthy and fulfilling lives without the fear or threat of abuse or exploitation. I want to thank you again for inviting me here today, and I wish you a hugely pr pr productive meeting here in Lyon. Thank you.